<laughs> you know, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't seen my soul tonight. <sighs> See, I didn't know it was my soul at first, but when it started talking to me, when it started telling me how I, I was scared of, of being hit by invisible cars, how I was only happy listening to Simon and Garfunkel while it sounded so much like me. <laughs> so, so I go to it. I go to it and I, I ask it if it could tell me just one thing, just one thing about itself, about me. What would it tell me? Hmm. So, it hesitates at first. You know, like it can't decide what delicious secret to tell me. And then it sighs, that as much as a soul can sigh, it sighs and sort of hiccups a little, like, like it's overexcited or, or drunk or something. So when it's done making all these sounds, it stares at me with with transparent eyes and, and a tiny voice, you know, the, the, the voice a, a fawn might have or, or a baby lamb. It says to me, if you live through today, you'll get fired tomorrow. And when you find another job, you'll get fired from that too. And when you find someone that you love, that person will leave you. And when you die, no one will care. <laughs> so what do you say to that? I mean, what do you say? What do you say when your own soul tells you that you're a failure? And it looks pretty happy about that too. Like, like it's almost giddy. It's having fun telling you that you'll end up alone. So, 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 so I started to wonder if it's really my soul at all. If it's someone else's, like, like my arch nemesis or something, telling me this so that I give up hope. Stop fighting for the good side and my enemy wins by forfeit. <laughs> so I say, the only thing I can think to say, and I, I do the only thing I can think to do. I don't need you. I tell it. And I squash it. And I kill it. And that's why I'm down here, I guess. I really thought it'd be a lot hotter.